welcome to another episode of the Backyard Horse Enthusiasts. Today's special guest is Linda Kent Bruce from Soulful Prairies in Woodstock, Illinois. Welcome. Hey, Linda, welcome to another episode of the Backyard Horse Enthusiast. We are so happy to have you here sharing your journey with Soulful Prairies. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for inviting me on. I always appreciate people who are kind of getting the word of the horse out into the world in different ways. So thank you. You're very welcome. Um, I enjoy speaking with other fellow equine gestalt practitioners. You are a master equine gestalt practitioner, correct? Yep, that's correct. Yep. When did this journey begin? The journey, the Gestalt journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I graduated from the um, initial program. I think it's been ten or 11, ten years ago, and then um, I went through the GCM, so the the extended two years, and graduated about two years ago now, or a year and a half ago, something like that. So I took some time to to practice and do the work for a while, and then went back to the, the GCM. So with that being said, your love for equine, when did that begin for you? Yeah, you know, I think I was in, I think I was in middle school, you know, so maybe 11, 12, something like that. Uh, and I just started taking lessons and really did fall in love with it and, and continued through college years, uh, probably my sophomore year of college. So, and it was, you know, yeah, it was lessons. I did not own a horse as a child, but, you know, I was one of those kids who would go to the barn during the summer and work so that I could take a few extra lessons and that kind of thing. So, yeah, that's the the early on history. And then um, took some time off in college and then went back and then at some point started having kids and and stopped for some years in there just because they were little um, and then went back and have been back in it ever since. So, What was the catalyst to bring you back after you started your family? Was there a specific event that happened or just this yearning? You know, it, it, it is something, right? Like that you just kind of hold that you're like, I need, you need to get back to that someday. And I actually, my father-in-law was in a hospital near... Um, a barn that I had ridden at uh, quite a while earlier. And I kept driving by that barn. I'm thinking, I got to stop in there. I got to stop in there. So I did one day, I just stopped in and signed up for a lesson. And then that's what got me back. So I think driving by that place was what kind of got me, you know, back thinking about it. And then did you, you started taking lessons again? Yep. Back to lessons. Yeah. You got bitten again. Yeah. Yeah. And then at that point I had, my girls were young. They did start riding um, with me at some point. And then we, I think I got my first horse in my forties and, and then, you know how that goes. (laughs) Then there's another one and there's another one. (laughs) Oh, you mean like potato chips kind of thing? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. Oh my goodness. And are your are your children, well, they're, ch- they're adults, I'm sure now, right? Like yeah. as are mine, uh, did they, are they still horse enthusiasts? Yeah. So my two daughters were the ones that rode with me for years. And now, um, you know, they're, they're on with their lives and they've got careers and all that, but they do when they come out to Soulful Prairies, they'll ride um, with me. So they, they still have that in a little bit in their background, and I'm sure they'll come around to it again someday, like I did. Like yeah. you, sure, yeah. sure, and me, myself. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. So you're in your 40s, get, you get the horse, you're back, you, you're bitten again. And then how did that journey from, you know, your love of horses and riding into gestalt work, where, did, where does that happen? I mean, I know you've got, degrees in social work, you have a bachelor's in social work, a master's in counseling. Woman, I don't even know, you are like my idol. I wanna know where you keep your your superwoman cape for all that you've done and continue to do. You're double certified in the equine gestalt program, natural lifemanship training. People, are you like feeling like, you know, you could be doing more out there? Therapeutic gong and sound technique training. 
my God, natural horsemanship training in clinics, hooked animal, humane society investigator. You sit on the board of directors for hope through horses. Holy cow. So with all that being said, uh, and I, and I just host a little YouTube channel. No, I'm not. I'm kidding. No, you, <laughs> so, you are amazing. When I saw you a year ago at Summit, I was like, who is this woman? I must get to know her better. Oh, that's so here sweet. we are. Oh. But how, how does it, how do you, how, like, did you go to a retreat? How did you find this? Yeah, you know, it's interesting because I think that when I went back, um, I ended up, you know, with time, then we bought a couple of horses and I, I sort of started to get that really sick feeling in my stomach around some of the things that happen um, with training, with traditional training. And it's one of those things, I think when you're young, you just assume they know what they're doing, you know? Um, and then as you get older, you start to question more. I wish I had questioned earlier, probably. Uh, and, and then I also knew my kids were getting, gradually getting older and I was, you know, in that place of knowing um, they had been such a big part of my life. I was very involved in their, their growing up. And, um, and so I was kind of looking for what, what's it going to look like, you know, when my time opens up a little bit more. And so I had been looking for a program that included um, kind of uh, mental health, and then I thought, oh, how cool if you could pull horses in my two favorite things, you know, and I look for quite a while I did, you know, because Melissa's program was just starting. So I think I, it probably wasn't popping up in searches. And I did some other programs short, you know, shorter, uh, didn't really feel like I was getting what I wanted. And then I ran into her program. Uh, and, you know, again, kind of at that point, it was like, what's next for me when my as my kids become more independent um, and the idea that the horses had more to offer not completely understanding what that meant to me um, but knowing that it didn't the way i was keeping my horses didn't feel good to me on many levels from the training all the way down to being in a stall pretty much you know, 18 hours a day with two hours in a little paddock. So none of it felt natural and right. And um, so that sort of was part of what pushed me um, to start looking. Oh, I resonate with that as, as this is how I came up with the name Backyard Horse Enthusiast, because I too, you know, had exposure, well, from being a child and having this huge stable riding stable, it was a business for my father. And again, I only knew what I knew. And as, as I got older and I was showing horses and training and coaching and had my horses in the backyard, I didn't have an indoor, so they would have to go to a big facility for you know February, March, April to get ready for the show season. And I was always my most miserable. And I felt like my horses were, were not happy, right? I, I was like, this is, this is not, good for their souls and nor mine yeah they're they're in a stall they get to go out for a couple of hours that's not living and i too changed the way i felt about just training about the the politics in showing um the money and that yeah. the horse was not at the forefront it wasn't about the horse's well-being it was yeah. about making clients happy and delivering on their investments. And that did not feel good to me at all. Yeah. Yeah. You said that really well. Cause I think I felt that too, you know, the, you know, the most expensive horse wins the show The you know, not necessarily the most talented rider or that, you know, and um, so, so many things just get it. Yeah. And again, and that, that feeling of if it's, you know, a hundred degrees and there's a horse show, the show must go on, even if, everybody's miserable, you know, that kind of thing is, is tough. And it is the industry obviously is geared somewhat around money. So, you know, that, yeah. Bottom line, and it doesn't matter, you know, doesn't matter about the animal's welfare, well-being. Um, yeah. I, I know I, this past year, my horse was moved four times until I found, because I could no longer, I lost my property. I had to move. And that's a whole nother story, 
but I needed to, and he came back to me. I had a very dear friend purchase him from me and literally hold him for a year for me. Wow. And while I was at Summit last September, <laughs> she sends me a text and says, thank you for allowing him to be a part of my life. He belongs with you and I'm gifting him back to you. Oh, it was exactly how I thought divine would step in and intervene and it would play out. But that being said, it took four moves to find a property and people with the same philosophy that I had, that it's about the horse comes first. Yeah. So now he's on a beautiful property and he's got a run in and he has a stall for, you know, inclement weather if it's really horrendous, but he's turned out 24 seven with other horses and he's happy. I'm yeah, happy. Yeah. Yes. So I, I so get this. Thank you yeah. for sharing that. 11 years ago, you embark on your journey of gestalt with equine. You meet Melissa. Did you go to a retreat first or did you just contact her and say, sign me up? Here we go. Yeah, you know, I mean, I did some research and reading and whatnot, and um, but no, I did not go to any retreats, and I did just kind of sign up, and I was blown away. Like the first, I mean, it wasn't exactly. I always laugh because I can remember my husband saying to me, "Well, have fun," and I'm like, "Oh, I will." And I went to the first court, and I came home, and I was a complete mess. And he's like, "What happened to you?" I'm like, "I'm not sure yet." <laughs> <laughs> like, are you sure you want to do this and go back? And, you know. So, um, yeah, it was not, I, I wasn't what I was anticipating exactly, but again, stayed the course and continued on. So. Oh, amazing that, that you did not go and experience a retreat because I know she offers retreats that she probably, has she done any? Has Melissa Pierce done any at your facility? She does uh, some grad, I mean, not sorry, she does some cores at Silphal okay. Prairie. So she was doing those regularly and now it's a little more here and there. Um, but yes, yeah, so she's done cores, but not, I, no retreats, yeah. Okay, so, but what came first? Soulful Prairies, as far as the property, you and your husband purchased this property. It was, from what I've read, like, a real process to get it to your vision. Yeah, and yeah, we, yeah, we were kind of looking, um, and I think you know I had always had a thing for farmland, and it was when the economy was not so good, and um, I, it was a mess. I mean, it was a big, messy, falling down buildings property, but there was definitely something about it that I, I loved. Um, and then actually, we put a bid in and backed out and then a year later the bank came back to us and said it's still we still have it and we really want to get rid of it by the end of this year it was november i believe and um and i went back and i'm like i still love this piece of property and so um yeah that's that's amazing and you know in in and i have to tell you linda your website to me is like watching a documentary. I will tell you, I went to every tab, watched the video, looked at every event that's coming up. Like, like it's the beauty in it. Your vision is so apparent. The fact that you, you took this piece of property that was saying, somebody love me, please, and, and you did it, your husband stood right by you, supported mm -hmm. you in that, you both rolled up your sleeves and you created what I consider truly to be one of the most epic and just gorgeous facilities out there. And when I say that for me, I have to view something and get pulled into it. Like I, I have to feel that soul moving connection to a property and your property, your facility screams peace, love, connection, balance, it, it, all the right energy. How, how did you stay the course? How do you, how do you manage so much? You've got to practice an, an, an equine 
gestalt practice, right? Um, you serve on the board of directors. You're you're building this property. How do you maintain an equilibrium that allows you to continue to have vision, create, and be? Like I am in awe. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, obviously, that's a like an ongoing right um, goal. <laughs> You know, that balance, I, it's so funny, I just wrote a newsletter and I, for the first time in a long time, maybe ever, I'm feeling like that's there, you know, having the right support as far as employees and, you know, all of that is what makes it work. And I mean, it, I started there with myself and two other women and, you know, slept on the floor of the barn loft, you know, and and was a third of the work of, of keeping stalls cleaned and everybody fed and that we had no grass yet. So everything was mud and, you know, like, so it's just really was like one foot in front of the other and not, you know, I think people ask often, like, was, did you have this big vision and, it, and now it's exactly what you thought it was. And for me, it, it wasn't that it was, um, knowing like, well, yeah, we're going to bring horses here. So a barn makes sense, you know, let's get the barn up, you know, or it, 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 it's not like I sat down and drew the whole thing out and I, and it continues to be that way. And there's things I feel like I do really well and things that I've made mistakes on and that I backtrack and attempt to adjust around. Um, but yeah, I think the, I, I appreciate you saying, you know, that, that, that feeling of the property, um, I, I believe that's just because we took it took it step by step and there's a lot of detail um, that is not um, not about expense it's about time and love you know like uh, the the details on the buildings and the on the property um, there's swings there's places to you know kind of nestle in and hang out and um, so yeah so a lot of care was taken in I feel like every step that was taken, but it was not a big vision all at once. It was sort of gradually unfolding as I moved through it. How many year? How many years have you been on that property? So um, it's a funny. I was just looking. At, I believe we've owned it twelve years, and you know the first years were kind of about like oh, like do we save any of the falling down buildings, that kind of thing, and and I believe you know eleven. 10 years ago, we began the building process. Wow. Unbelievable. I'm, again, I keep saying it, Linda, but truly when, when I look at your website, I want to crawl into the screen of my computer and be there. It is such a welcoming, peaceful, uh, retreat. It's, it's, good God, just, it's everything. Truly. Um, in fact, I'd love to do a sidebar with you and uh, figure out how I can do have one of my inner child healing retreats at your facility sometime. Absolutely. In yeah, because we so that's another thing. I don't know if we're on or off, but um, that's another thing that we do. So, you know, I I do host um, retreats myself. I do um, a couple in Montana. Um, I'm, I did California at a wild horse sanctuary and I'm doing two there this year and then I do one or two at Soulful Prairies and that being said you know the weekends then are available for others to hold retreats there so oftentimes uh, I'll have someone sometimes maybe it's a yoga person or you know comes in and says I want to do a weekend retreat and then they may hire me to do a morning of gestalt with their guests but the rest of the retreat is planned by them and then I also have people come in and just do their own retreats there and I um, I really love that. I think that's when you talk about balance and figuring things out. Um, I was a yes, yes, yes to everything in the beginning. And now to me, it feels like it's like the fine tuning of what is this really for and about um, without getting too far out of my lane. You know, it's easy. It's easy to do because I get excited and it really does feel like we just put a tagline on my logo, which is um, equine gestalt therapy and retreat center. And that feels like, yeah, that brings it in tighter to what it really is. Um, 
And we do, you know, I do a little, I always call them side gigs. Like we do yoga gong and horses and a couple things like that. But I've, I've reeled back on that because what I want Soulful Prairies to be known for is the healing of Gestalt. And, and so when you step too far out of that lane, people start going, oh, they're the ones that do. And it's something totally different. Gotcha. You know? yeah, 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 that makes sense. What is what is your do you have a niche and if so what is that and what type of gestalt uh work do you do do you offer yeah um it's interesting because you know melissa really likes us to leave the program with a niche and i really struggled with it and um to this day i would say i don't have a niche um i've worked with a lot of different populations I do know in general, like children in the beginning, I would once in a while kind of have a, a younger person come and I realized it really isn't my wheelhouse. Um, mm -hmm. So, and I don't also believe that the gestalt is, a, you know, is the perfect scenario for gestalt is probably not children. And so I love the gest leaning really into the gestalt. So, um, so there is no niche. I tend to draw, you know, women between, I'd say, 30 and 70, you know, like it's pretty. And, you know, I, I think the, the problem for me is I think that we all have trauma, right? We all have pieces that hurt, wounded, unfinished parts of ourselves. And so to narrow down and say, I only work with this population, for me, it just, it didn't, it didn't make sense. And I get, I understand people who really are tuned into eating disorders or whatever it may be, that makes sense for them. Mm -hmm. uh, when someone comes to me, let's say, and I have an eating disorder and I'd like to work with you, I'm very clear that that is not my specialty but that I believe the gestalt work can be so supportive of their journey with their eating disorder. So I'm not going to be working on the details of that specific thing. I'll be working on other pieces around it that support in the process of the eating disorder, you know, needs of that, that client. That makes perfect sense. I, I find the same with my, I lead multiple inner child healing work groups and what I do that you're familiar with is I give them the clean sweep when they begin. And then when they're done with the 12 weeks, they do it again. So as you said, when you're working with background and healing, those parts of their lives, those different from environmental, relationship, finances, health, improve exponentially. And we're not targeting that. those things specifically we're targeting your your shadow work the things that are in the background that are creating events in your present life that need to be brought up and exposed and spoken to and healed and put to rest yeah. so it was really eye-opening and i did that as an experiment to see Will their lives improve after 12 weeks of delving deep into their inner child? Mm -hmm. And yes, yeah, definitely. I think that's so fun too about the work because sometimes um, I'll do, um, you know, just kind of what areas of your life are feel off kilter, you know, and we'll talk about that. And then the idea is I think clients can come in really overwhelmed. Like I have all these things that I need to work on if they're in that place. And that same idea that you're talking about is when when you work in one area, it affects everything. And so that's so it's such a relief, right? To not feel like I have a checklist of a hundred things that I think I need to look at. Well, let's just start in one area, and it'll it'll bleed into that, um, and and begin to do work in all areas of your life, which is so cool. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, so. Do you offer like phone coaching, Zoom coaching, in-person, group? What kind of offerings does Soulful Prairies have for Gestalt work? Hang on one second. I just realized my battery's low. Hang on. Make sure you get us plugged in. Okay. Um, sorry about that. So no uh, worries. I uh, asked that question again. We'll start over there. 
what type of coaching offerings do you have? Do you hold in-person groups? Do you do anything online, Zoom, phone, one-on-one? -on -one? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, thanks. I, um, I do Zoom. Um, I prefer in person, I think most people do, but I also believe Zoom can be really supportive around clients that live three hours away and they can do some Zooms and we can get some, some of that, to me, a little more heady stuff out of the way, um, use some of the tools on Zoom and then they can come in and we can you know, dive deeper into some of the work with the horses. Uh, so I, I do Zoom. I also do obviously in-person one-on-ones. I do groups and retreats and I do some corporate, I work with not-for-profits, uh, you know, teams, that type of thing. And then um, I have a few kind of one-offs where I'm gonna have a, a veterans group come stay for a couple nights and do some work. So there's, there's sort of private groups that come in also and we create retreats together with with them uh, and then I do I'm going to talk about my favorite thing to do which is sort of new to me um, in the last couple years um, I've really gotten more and more talking to clients about doing intensive retreats where they come and stay on property usually it's a three day they come in and they um, they can stay and we'll do usually one extended session on the first day two extended sessions morning and afternoon on the second and one extended on the third and i i just see so much movement and uh time for them between the sessions to process uh i think when we go and have a session and go jump back into the middle of our lives it can be difficult to take the time we really need and so it's just i i love those and it's where i see a lot of movement and again those can be supported with zoom or one-on-ones before and after um, so so that's kind of something i've been doing more and more of oh i love that idea so this is one-on-one -on -one intensive they come to soulful prairie stay in that absolutely beautiful cabin that you offer and so they come in the first day they do one-on-one -on -one intensive just one session and then what what would the rest of their day look like there so that they do have the time to process and that what kind of offerings are there for them yeah so if we have anything else going on 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 the property they're welcome to it you know like i know once in a while it lines up perfectly and we have you know yoga gong and horses and they can jump in on that but for the most part um it's just time independent time so they would go you know for instance if they showed up at noon got settled into their cabin and then we had a 1 30 um session it would go till maybe four uh you know 4 30 something like that and then they could go and sit in a swing or we do have a labyrinth they could walk the labyrinth they can we have walking paths on the property um it really is just time to kind of sit and i you know i, I often suggest some journaling uh as they're processing what happened in the session and then they you know they the meals are for them to bring in but we have you know a fridge and microwave and oven and all that so they they are cooking for themselves and yeah and then the next morning they would get up and um usually we start at nine or so maybe go till noon a midday break and then the same thing in the afternoon and so it's just i i feel like the property really does sort of hold people nicely and to have that time to sit in a swing or lay in a hammock or spend time with the horses in between is is as valuable as the session sometimes. I'm sure, absolutely. And for our listeners and viewers, all the information to contact Linda will be in the description box below. So please make sure you check it out and absolutely go to Soulful Prairie's website. There's more, so much more to, to view there and to gather for information. Um, with that being said about the the one-on-one, -on -one, which I am so intrigued, boy, I would do it, <laughs> but I probably wouldn't leave. I would stay. <laughs> Hope you need more help. Um, <laughs> what, what has been your feedback from clients that have, you know, come in and taken advantage of this intensive three-day one-on-one work with you 
Yeah, I mean, I feel like, you know, the, I, the, the biggest thing I hear is that it's a, a nice big leap forward. So, you know, if you're in um, weekly sessions with a therapist in an office, um, you know, I, I always talk about how like many of my clients say I've been in therapy for 10 years. I so don't want that. Um, that's not my goal with my clients. And so, again, you know, I think it's a it's a bigger jump forward. And it also sort of I feel like we get through a lot and it doesn't mean there isn't more that needs to be looked at, but maybe it feels a little more more manageable. Like I've like you said, I've, I've experienced these things are affecting all parts of my life. And now maybe I'm going to do a one on one every other week with Linda for a little bit. And then maybe it'll be once a month. And then then maybe it's, you know, I'll call you when something comes up for me, you know, so. I just I think the biggest feedback would be that that, that, that it's a nice leap forward. And you, you're not. Oh, pardon me. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and if someone oftentimes that can be someone who's like really in crisis, they're really feeling like they're not functioning in their life and that they need to they they kind of need to hunker down. Um, <clears throat> and so hopefully we're moving them into a place where they feel more functional when they leave. I also work with people who are not in that space of total crisis, but they know like, you know, I, I need to get to this stuff. So. And you do, you, you, you get to the, the meat and potatoes of it. And it's not something that you have to ruminate over going forward over and over, which, you know, now I'm not putting down, there is a place for traditional talk therapy, of course, but I don't think us as fellow equine gestalt practitioners, we're not looking for lifers in clients, right. Right. right? The joy we get is being able to get into it, pull it out from the deepest recesses, hit it head on and say, you know what? Now you're a memory, but you're no longer a trigger in my life. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I can function better in life by not being constantly triggered by this event. Yeah. And I'm sure I, I speak for myself and I'm sure I speak for many of us that, that went through this program and, and or are pursuing it. That's the goal. That is the beauty in what we do is knowing that we're um, allowing people to really step forward in life knowing who they are authentically. Like, I know that's what happened to me. You know, I came from such trauma, like horrendous that you probably only see in movies, but there were, there were other great things that I took with me as well. But um, I, did, I didn't know how to experience happiness until I went through this program. Yeah. I didn't know what it felt like. Mm -hmm. I wasn't in touch. Yeah. Now I can sit under a tree, look up and watch the, the leaves move. And it's ecstasy. It is pure blissful joy for me because I was too busy surviving and strategizing sure. survival. I could not be aware of anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was only this program that allowed that to happen for me. And, and I've, heard other clients of mine after doing um, some personal deep work that what I, I had one say to me last winter, I was sitting outside and I, I was watching the snow begin and it felt magical. I've never felt that before in my life. Wow. Yeah. Pretty amazing, right? Yeah. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Indeed. I think another thing that's just popping into my head as we're talking too is that one of the things that Soulful Prairies has made really clear to me is that how important connection is. So I tend to, if I have just one-off sessions, you know, not intensives, I tend to leave space between them. I'm not a rusher. Um, if they need 15 minutes more or 15 minutes less, we, we flex in that way. Um, and I think that's another thing that has become sort of a model in therapy is the buzzer goes off 50 minutes in and out you go, even if you're in the middle of something. And so um, I think that that's so important and, and it creates it creates 
the feeling of I matter. And if, if we need a little extra time, it's there for me. Uh, it's probably not the best model, you know, financially, but it's for me, it's important. And I know I need a little time in between. And then what I was going to say too is connection. So Soulful Prairies has also become a place of connection for people where they can come for other events. So, you know, everyone loves being out with the horses and experiencing, you know, the, the gestalt sessions. And then um, there's other ways to stay connected if you are tapering off on your sessions. And I think that that's so important, that feeling and sense of there's a space um, that supports me outside of the Gestalt sessions. And there's other women um, or people, you know, my my women's groups, you know, they're they're out there for something and then they show up at another event and they see each other, they become friends, you know, and that feels like such a supporting piece of healing. Yeah, for sure. I, I have a group. <laughs> they're funny. They did the inner child groups run for 12 weeks and we got to the end of the first 12 weeks and the group said, we don't want this to end. Can we do more? I said, all right, we'll continue in this work. We got to the end of 12 weeks and they said, now what we want? I don't think I can go a week without meeting with all my, my beautiful friends that I've met here. What can we do next? <laughs> and so I said, all right, we can dive deep into family secrets. You want to do that? That could bring up some fun stuff. And they did. And they, they continue did. to show up because it's their connection to each other. It's a safe place yeah. to share whatever comes up for them. And they don't feel judged. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Do you have drop-in groups that you offer too? Yeah, I do. And I've done that for a long time. Um, so I have a once a month drop in group and that seems to work out really well. It's a great place when people are like, I'm not so sure about this or this makes me nervous. You know, I'm like, come to a group. You don't have to even say very much, but you'll begin to understand what the work is about. So um, those have been a, a nice feeder for people who are curious about the work. And then, you know, I have the usually it's half people who come regularly and half new people. That sort of seems to be um, how those groups look usually. And then I tend to do one closed group a year that runs six months every other week. And then if they want to continue, or we kind of deal with that at the end, but the commitment is six months. Oh, I love it. Makes sense. It really, really does. So. I'm going to, I'm going to kind of pull away from that for a minute because something that I saw on your website about the impact of soulful prairies is, um, the money that you've raised. Oh yeah. $365,000 plus. What's, what is that about? Can you share with our viewers? What you've done to do, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's kind of been just, oh, so, it, you know, it's been 10 years, right? And um, one of the first fundraisers we did was a farm to table dinner. A girlfriend of mine is a director of an organization and they got excited about that idea. <clears throat> and so um, we had a, a, a chef come in and do a, a farm to table dinner. That, so that's been something um, over the, I think we're on our 11th or 12th this year. We've been doing that every year. And then we have Soul Jam, which is a music fundraiser. And we do that annually in the fall. So that brings in quite a bit. And then I can't remember, but in that number, we, you know, we definitely um, have donated space for people to use for their own fundraisers or um, given them a discount. So some of those numbers are just from, you know, supporting other people in their efforts um, to bring in money for their organization. So I can't, I can't remember all the different, you know, different, different organizations, but uh, there's been a lot involved over the years, which is neat. And our Soul Jam, it rotates. It's a different organization each year, uh, which feels really good. So we just find an organization that we can feel excited and, and rally around. Hope Your Horses has been 
um, the recipient a few years. And so that's probably where most of that money, that, that the number, you know, and then lots of little, little things where we've supported. Wow. Oh, what is soulful or soul jam? What, what is soul jam? Yeah, so Soul Jam is it's always on the Saturday after um, Labor Day, and uh, it's a music fundraiser. So there's, oh, I think usually about seven different bands, uh, but we have four bigger bands and three or four acoustic side stage bands. And it really is coming and setting up a spot, bringing your chairs, bringing your cooler. So you can bring your own food and drinks, but we also have food and drinks for sale. And it's just hanging out on the farm, listening to really good music. And then the money goes to, you know, it goes to two different organizations. In fact, this year, it, the recipient is Baby Spirit, which is a organization that when a child is um, passes away, I believe it's, you know, either in utero when the when it's a preemie or uh, up to four months after birth, they support in having a service for the child and supporting the families that go through that. And then the other recipient is um, the Wild Mustang Academy. And what they do is work hard to train Mustangs that are in holding and find homes for them. So it's kind of a neat combination of horsey and non, so. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh my gosh. And here's a shout out to Robert Goodland. Is he good? I know he's, he's performed yes robert yeah, has not, performed? he's not this year he has in the past yes oh not this year all oh. too bad i might have flown out for that one <laughs> <laughs> yeah we were talking music last year and that's when i found out about well through you and also him and i had a conversation with robert and he was talking about how he had played at soul jam and i just was like oh it sounds yeah. wonderful I want to be it's there. It's a fun event. It really is. It's kind of wholesome and fun. And yeah. I'll bet. Oh, my goodness. Well, we are getting. We are getting to the end of our interview. Linda, is there anything that you would like to add that we've not touched on? You know, I think that we started touching on it, but just the 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 beauty of the horses and the uh, I think my moving from right a hunter jumper training barn to the world I'm in and like the honoring of them and you know I, that's always a message I want to get out when people come and they don't know horses or they've been in that world is that you know they have so much to offer beyond that and so you know even when people come out they're like can we take lessons and can we you know and i was like that's not what we do here and i, I don't want to just say it as if like this we're a different kind of barn which we are but also like that that's not top of the list you know it's it's the connection with the horse on the ground um and and having a fair relationship with them and not demanding and that's, I think, partly what I love about the Gestalt work is that they are there at liberty to do and show up however they want. And it's so impactful. And so, and there's no demand, there's no ask. It's just be as, as you'd like to be with me and my client, you know. Indeed. Yeah, thank you for that. And I, I agree, my relationship now with horses way different. Um, I have videos, you know, on my channel of me out hiking with my horse. Mm -hmm. We're hiking and we're yeah. just hanging out. He's got his fly mask on and we're trucking along and checking in with each other and let's go play. We play in the water. And I, my message is that, you know, could I ride him? Of course. Do I ride him? When, when I feel moved to, sometimes I'll tack them up, put a saddle on them, and I'll hike an hour out into the forest. And then, you know, I might start getting tired and I'll ask him, hey, you want to carry mom home, you know, and <laughs> find a stump and get on his back. And, and we go home bitless, usually. Um, but that it's, it's more about our connection. It's more about our partnership yeah. as friends and I mean, when your horse will, you show up at a facility and your horse will stop eating to come over and check in with you, yeah. that, that says something about your relationship. And it was like that when I had four horses because 
nothing was ever a, a dirty surprise. Like, you know, up oh, here's the vet and we're going, you know, I would have conversations with them in the morning at feeding, like, Hey guys, you know, Dr. Wilkinson's showing up and we're going to, we need to do this today. Okay. So I just want you to know, and I swear those vets, I used to veterinary university, they'd come out with all their residents and I, time and time again, they would say to me, your horses are unique. Like mm -hmm. they would do what they had to do. And, and my horses would be like, we don't need to go back out to the paddock. We really want to hang here with all these humans and just, you know, have a conversation. And they should probably tell me how absolutely amazing I am because I am. And it was and every professional that came, when I say professional, their chiropractor, their massage therapist, all of them, they had the same thing to say about these horses, that they were just so into the connection, into just being with us, that they found it magical to be there. Yeah, yeah. And I think that, I mean, that comes a little of my natural life and background, that whole, one of the things that like grabbed me more than anything was one of the many philosophies is that in order to build a relationship, the horse has to be able to say no. And, and doesn't that really bleed over into our relationships with our children? And you know, that, that safety comes from knowing it's okay to say no. And it doesn't mean that we don't continue to ask, uh, especially if we believe it's good for our connection and our relationship with the horse, we can continue to ask, but they still have the door out to say no or no, not right now. And, and I'm assuming when you talk about your horses, that's kind of, that's where I, I've seen the change and the shift in the herds when there's more freedom and they have a voice and they're not just on autopilot and doing as they're told. And so I think that's such an important thing for the world to know. And I know many horse people know that and many don't, you know. I, I most of the practitioners that would come out, as I said, massage, chiropractors, farriers, they knew that my horses did not go in cross ties. They do, they can, yeah. but most of the time they don't, they ground tie because I feel like they feel claustrophobic and they let me, I don't like that. And I'll have a horse that will stand still off of cross ties, but put him in the cross ties and he is dancing. Yeah. He doesn't like it. And I respect that. And I will tell you, Linda, I had this old guy, Teddy, 28 years old, and he was navicular and it, it was, he was a very stoic, quiet man, but loving. And I was very, I'm protective of all of them. I have to be their voice. I can hear them. And my farrier came out and she worked on him and, and it hurt, but she understood. And I was always like an eagle watching, you know, like don't lift that leg too high. That hurts him. And she honored that. And I remember one day I, I, we were done and I walked him out to the paddock and took his halter off and he took like two strides and he stopped and I swear, and people can think I'm nuts, but he stopped and he tilted his head to the side and I heard as clear as a bell, thank you. It was so touching. Wow. And, and I'm gonna cry now. I love that horse but he just appreciated that I was always looking out for his safety and his comfort and he appreciated it. And he was a man of few words, mm -hmm. but my God, he took that moment. He could have just kept walking like, there's my herd, herd mates out there. I got to go out and eat with them, but he didn't. He took two strides and he, and he just stopped and tilted his head and said, thank you. Wow. That, that, exists if you take yeah. the time to listen mm -hmm. and I, I, many moons ago i helped a friend out in her hunter jumper facility she had 28 horses there 28 is the number today synchronicities um and there was this one mayor there always in the stall you know probably worth some big dollars you know show horse and she said to me, well, you've been here long enough because I would help her, you know, clean stalls and turn out horses. She goes, I'm going to let you go get so-and-so, but be careful because she will like come after you, teeth bared. 
And I remember, Linda, I stood at her stall door and I cracked it. And I looked at her and I said, hi, I'd like to come in and put your boots on and change your blankets and turn you out, okay? And I waited and I felt the release of, yes, you can come in. And again, I can, I can hear them. And I was changing out her boots and petting her. And I said, I know you're a good girl, honey. And I heard her as plain as day say, I am, but I hurt. Mm. And I walked out with her and I said, Candy, this horse is in pain and she needs somebody to figure out what's going on. She is not mean, but she, I could feel her embarrassment of like, she knew I was walking in there and I know she overheard Candy say, watch her. She's, she's mean. She'll attack you. She'll bite you. She'll turn around. She'll kick you. And right. I didn't feel that from her and she didn't want to be misunderstood. And she clearly said to me, I am not mean. I am in pain. Mm -hmm. I hurt. I'll never forget that. Yeah. Yeah. And so often, right. Horses get labeled one way or the other. And so, and it's, it's something I'm in pain, I'm scared, I'm whatever, you know, and, and then we label them as, you know, they're dangerous or they're bad or they're, you know, and without taking that time to slow down and go is something going on with this horse that's creating this. Yeah. Absolutely. Stop and listen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here we are. Here we Thank are. you. Thank you so much for this wonderful time with me and our audience. So appreciated, Linda. And for our viewers, if you want to get in contact with Linda, all the information is in the description box. Please don't hesitate to reach out and journey into wholeness. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. I enjoyed this very much. Same. Thank you. We'll be in touch. Okay. Take care.